Nope. Hello everyone, it's Colorado Way here, and welcome back to another YouTube video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about how good Inkling's recovery is, and by edge guarding, Inkling can get you punished. Now, from the montage at the beginning of the video, you can pretty much see what happens when you try to edge guard Inkling, or specifically when you try to edge guard me as Inkling. Now, here's the thing: the montage was a minute long, and if I included all the times someone has tried to edge guard me as Inkling, the montage will be like 15 to 20 minutes long. That's how many times someone has edgeguarded me while I was playing Inkling. So in this video, I'm going to explain why edgeguarding Inkling can be very risky. So let's get right into it. First things first, let's look at Inkling's really good recovery and how truly good it is. First off, we're going to be looking at her up special. Inkling's up special can make it so she can come back from almost anywhere from off stage, unless you're from the very bottom corner. It also has three different ankles, but the straight up version can make it the furthest. Now combine her up B with her double jump and her roller jump. She now has one of the best recoveries in the whole game. With these three resources, you cannot give Inkling at all. Inkling just having her double jump and her up B alone, she can go to the bottom of the blast zone and she will still make it back fairly easily. You also can't react when she's going to recover as well, since her up B has like 12 frames of startup and you just can't react to it. This makes it so Inkling has so many mix-ups when she wants to recover. For example, Inkling can stall for a very long time with her two double jumps below the ledge and she can just up B to the ledge, or she can just go straight to the ledge with an air dodge or her really fast up B. Inkling can also stall very well on every stage on the stage list, either she can go under the stage, or use a wall jump for the stage having a wall, or just stall really hard under the ledge, or just go to the other side of the stage, if the stage doesn't have a wall at the bottom of it. Now let's get into why edge guarding Inkling is risky. Why shouldn't you do it? Well, first things first, it's actually not advised to edge guard in ultimate at top level since you'll be giving up stage control and will be giving stage control to the opponent. This is especially the case if the opponent has a really good recovery. But what can Inkling, specifically Inkling, can do when the opponent misses their edge guard? Well, there are actually quite a few ways Inkling can KO the opponent for going for an edge guard and failing to do it even without going into the ledge trapping phase. The one example everyone knows Inkling can do when the opponent misses their edge guard is that she can use her up B to punish him for it. The worst case scenario for the opponent is that when they miss the edge guard, they buffer their double jump back to the stage and they'll lose their double jump from the up B. If the opponent doesn't waste their double jump, they will get edge guarded by Inkling, so the Inkling will just do a drop off off the ledge to a back air, and they'll be dead when they cannot recover. Inkling is also in general very hard to hit when trying to edge guard her since she can recover where she can hug the wall, or she can just recover from the side and angle her up B. So as the Inkling player, it is very important to mix up how you recover with Inkling since it's almost impossible for the opponent to anticipate what you're going to do when you recover. It's also good for the Inkling player to react to what to do when the opponent misses their edge guard with an up B or back air. Now obviously, punishing opponents for edge guards can be risky, especially if you haven't practiced it that much. So I'm going to show you how to set up a ledge trap after the opponent misses their edge guard. The simplest thing to do is set up a down smash ledge trap. What you need to do this, I recommend, is doing a drop ball off the ledge into an instant double jump, and then fast falling to the ground to an instant turnaround. 
the inputs sound kind of complicated, but trust me, it's pretty easy to understand, and practicing it doesn't take that long. Plus, this is the fastest way I found to do a down smash rush trap after it being to the ledge. The next thing I want to talk about is setting up a splat bomb. The way to set up a splat bomb towards the ledge after grabbing the ledge is to drop off the ledge and double jump towards the stage, and depending on which ledge you're on, Angle your control stick towards the ledge and do a reverse special splat bomb. Not a B reverse splat bomb, a reverse special splat bomb. So, if you do a B reverse, you'll go super close to the ledge and you won't get your splat bomb in the right position. So, doing a reverse special splat bomb puts you in the right position. And of course, angling your splat bomb correctly is also very important since you want to cover all the options with splat bomb. Once again, setting up left traps is slightly safer since you don't want to commit to an edge guard and you don't want to get reversal yourself, although it's unlikely. Both of these left traps are really good to set up from the ledge, but I would probably recommend doing the down smash instead of doing the down smash plus splat bomb since down smash is a lot harder to mess up and it covers more options at the ledge. So these are the main ways Inkling can punish the opponent for missing their edge guard alone attempting to edge guard Inkling. Now, I'm going to be looking at a couple of moves people say are really good at edge guarding Inkling, but looking at the actual counterplay to those moves. So, the first move I want to talk about is Kirby's Down Air. Kirby's Down Air is good for edge guarding for a couple of reasons. Kirby's Down Air just stays out for a very long time, and if the Kirby knows that the opponent uses their resources to recover, they can die pretty early. Now, let's look at Kirby's Down Air on Inkling real quick. Curry's down arc and inkling can ruin inkling's recovery, especially at higher percents if she does up bees towards the ledge since it stays out for a very long time. There's actually tons of counterplay to this. The inkling player can stall their recovery very long and can bait out a down air since she can use two jumps to do it. If the inkling doesn't use her double jump to recover and she up B, she'll get hit by the down air and she can use her double jump to come back. Another thing is if the Inkling player knows that the Kirby is going to down air, she can go right over the ledge and just completely avoid the down air completely. The Kirby pretty much always has to guess when the Inkling is out of resources and when they're going to up B since she, they cannot really react to their up B that well. Another move I want to talk about is Paul Tana's neutral air. This move has a lot of the same counterplay as Kirby's down air. Except this move really doesn't kill until around 200%? It just doesn't kill. So you're probably not going to see Politanus use this move at high percent unless you're at like 200% or something. Otherwise, this is not going to kill you. So you don't really have to worry about it for a while. One thing to know about Politanus using neutral air to edge guard is that they most of the time they just run off at this neutral air. They don't really hug the wall with it. Mostly because it's a little bit harder to set up. So, most of the time, if you're getting guarded by Paul Tana, just hug the wall and you'll be fine. There are also other moves similar to these moves I talked about, so apply pretty much the same counterplay to those moves and you should be fine. And yeah, that's pretty much it for today's video. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel, it really helps out a lot. Make sure to follow my social medias down below, my Twitch and my Twitter. If you plan to watch me on Twitch, make sure to follow me on my Twitch, Colorand08, and turn on notifications on Twitch with the bell icon for every time I go live, you'll get a notification sent to you. This is also good to do because I don't have a current stream schedule yet. And yeah, that's pretty much everything I need to talk about for the video. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.